that boy leave that baby, don't forget it. Hashtag. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm just sad to say that. My girl Crystal's back there, she dubbed me Dab Wadita. Dab Wadita. But anyway, more than just being Dab Wadita, baby, in 2009, when only white men got to do this shit, I opened the world famous Cannabis Cafe! Yeah! I mean, it's an icon, it made history, first one in the United States. I didn't know, I was really high. But I thought it was a blast and an opportunity for stoners to have a place of their own. Because we've always been like treated like lepers in society. You go somewhere and they go, oh, what's that smell? I just was at Social Security and some guy says, I smell weed, is that you? And I said, yeah, it is me and it's legal. So yeah, it, it's me. I said, and I smell alcohol, is it you? He goes, yeah, I had a screwdriver just for breakfast. So yeah, you know, it's out there, we're doing it, and I think that it's really important that we have a place like the Cannabis Cafe to go to, to have events, to experience playing pool while you're high, what the hell? What's wrong with that? In the time that we've had the Cannabis Cafe open, we absolutely had no accidents. No one ever came back to me and said, your place, like you would at a bar, caused someone to be impaired, and there was a death, or there was an accident. No one. We've had Portland Police Bureau come into the cafe with their gang enforcement because we had hip hop going on. And of course, you know, if there's hip hop and there's people of color around, oh, of course there's gonna be a fight, right? They came storming down our door. I said, no, no, come on, let's see, come and see. There is no alcohol here. There are not gonna be any fights because we're rapping. And uh, they came down, they didn't give me a piece of paper because they knew they were so wrong. They stopped at the door like it was poison when they saw that smoke. They said, come on, come on, you wanna walk through? And they, they walked away. But let me tell you something, there's a man here, Paul Lowe, the attorney. Where are you, Paul? You know, Paul and I sat down, and I told him what I wanted to do, and he helped me so much to write the law, to, to follow the law, and create this place. And uh, I don't know how many of you ever went to the world famous Cannabis Cafe. Anybody in here? Because there's a lot of people that look like, really young. And I mean, we deserve a place of our own. We are all, you know, law abiding citizens. All we ask is that we can smoke cannabis out of public view and be treated not like lepers, but like members of society. We used to have the Oregon Medical Cannabis Awards, and my goal with Oregon Normal was to um, make, make mainstream society, to have cannabis be expected, accepted widely. Well, the Oregonian was at our last event at the Anchorage Event Center down the street somewhere, and um, it was unbelievable. They came to me and they said, Madeline, when you find out who the winners are, please give us a call, we'd like to put them in the morning paper. And the Oregonian! So I felt like we came full circle, and now we need to close that circle up by legalizing cannabis cafes and lounges across the state of Oregon so that people have a place. I've talked to people that are 85 years old that can't smoke in their apartment that have to go out in the rain, out in the ice and snow, and consume cannabis in the, in the shadows in an hour. That's not right. I mean, who can, how can it be right? And people of color, what's going on with that? We're like all in the background. We need to come on out and take our rightful place in our community. This is our community. I want to see a couple of dispensaries that are, that are owned by Mexicanos, natives. Native. I mean, come on people, let's be fair about it. And one of the things I must say, because one of the things why people are very shy, they really are, they're gangsters, but they're shy gangsters. All oh, right, they really are. And we need to get them out there. We need to get them involved because everybody deserves to be in this industry if they want to. Am I right? Yeah. Here, I'm going to turn it back over to Sam because he's the man who knows what he's doing. Come on, Sam. So proud of this guy. He's going to be.